topics today. Recovery you're familiar with, uh, with narrative psychiatry, generative madness, and Icarus Project. I'm going to pull up connections and synergies. Um, starting with recovery, as, as we all know, um, there's a tremendous excitement about the new possibilities of recovery <coughs> in psychiatry. One of the things that I think is critical for us to always keep in mind is that beyond evidence, beyond outcomes, beyond ethics, um, the recovery movement is a social justice movement. It's a movement about inclusion. It's a democratic rallying cry. Nothing about us without us. It goes deep in our country, back to our founders. No taxation without representation. It goes forward all the way to Arab Spring. Democracy is a signifier that spreads. It's been part of the struggle with medicine for a long time, from women's health to ACT UP to disability rights to um, our own recovery movement. So it's about inclusion. It's about bringing um, stakeholders who are impacted by our knowledge systems, our education, our practice, our infrastructures into the process of creating knowledge, education, practice. And one of the things that I love about community psychiatry is that hasn't fallen on deaf ears. You guys have been able to hear, have been able to welcome, and been able to take seriously um, this call for inclusion. But one of the things that is a challenge for that is once you bring new voices in, you end up with new concerns, new priorities, new values, new variables, uh, more and more new voices are interested in things that haven't been foregrounded for us, things like spirituality, creativity, peer support, social change, um, <clears throat> all things that don't fit well into our paradigms. Um, and that means that uh, we need new paradigms. Um, <clears throat> second time you've heard that today. Uh, one of the challenges of new paradigm is how can you open up to new voices, new perspectives, new goals, new missions, uh, new priorities, without throwing out the bathwater of a hundred years of psychiatric and psychological research that still is invaluable for helping people work through difficulties. And what I found to be tremendously useful for this is to go across campus and begin to take seriously the affirmative work that's going on around narrative and narrative theory in the humanities, in interpretive social sciences, in cultural studies, uh, increasingly in psychology, in psychotherapy, in medicine. Um, and once you do that, you begin to start to see, you begin to start to, to, to turn the duck to a rabbit, you begin to start to see something different where you realize that much of the transformative processes we're involved with in the clinics and in the communities is about storytelling. It's about uh, the way in which people's lives move into crisis or move into stasis um, because the stories that they're telling are not working. When they come to us, we help them retell the story in a way that creates a resolution. Um, and that process is, is, is relies on the same tools um, that you can learn about through narrative and narrative theory. So we're talking about character, point of view, plot, setting, metaphor. Now metaphor is particularly fascinating because one of the things that you realize when you start seeing that helping people through a transformative arc is the way in which the better you are at telling different stories at hearing different stories, at imagining different possibilities for transformation, the more versatility that you have. And what metaphor does in this storytelling mode is help us tune into the deep way that our models, it's, a, it's, 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 it's like a broken brain, it's like unconscious conflict, it's like dysfunctional family. Our, our models work like metaphors. And when we begin to embrace this, we can do something that I think helps a bit of our inferiority complex. Because I think we're always a little bit ashamed about these multiple models. We're a little bit embarrassed about multiple models. Um, because we think, and then Thomas Kuhn came up, Kuhn said this, a mature science has one model, right? And an immature science has multiple models. But 
But when you move over into the humanities, you can see that when you're talking about people, multiple models is a good thing because it gives you increased diversity. Uh, over in the English department, they're not embarrassed at all that there's many different ways to interpret Hamlet. You can look at Hamlet through a deconstructive frame, through a psychoanalytic frame, through a feminist frame, through a post-colonial frame. All of those different frames tell you something potentially invaluable about Hamlet, and it's not a source of embarrassment, it's a source to, of, of pride, right? So if we as a field begin to figure out ways to take, uh, to embrace the diversity of models, we can not only sort of take serious our multiple models, we can also begin to reach out and find more models to use. And that's in another way where the new voices of the recovery movement are coming in. Because many of what they bring new is that they work many times with what I would call a generative model of psychic difference or non-ordinary states as opposed to a pathological model. So most of our models, despite their tremendous diversities, work on a, on a pathological frame. A generative frame flips um, the, the, the uh, collide, turns the kaleidoscope and shows ways that the sensitivity, the struggle, is part of uh, potentially something very valuable. It's part of the move to uh, recognize oppression and do something about it. It's part of the move to uh, go to a higher level of spirituality. It's part of the process of creativity. But of course, as you all know, in the current economic, political climate, uh, it's, it, the, the psychiatry is under a lot of forces to go just the other direction, to narrow the models, to make the models less and less numerous, um, to, to, to cut us down to biological poverty. <laughs> You guys get it right away, and you've been part of the struggle, um, but the struggle continues um, to uh, help us understand a way to open up to our diversity rather than close down to singular models. And that's where um, the Icarus Project comes in as well. So Sasha De Brule and Jax McNamara, young folks in the early 2000s, um, going through crisis, um, ending up in, in psychiatry uh, settings, being told they have broken brains and need medical treatment, but having a background in the arts, in music, in social activism, and not rejecting the medical model, but realizing it only scratches the surface of possibilities. So beginning to go out and using their activist skills to create social change and to create a community and to create new metaphors, one of my favorite metaphors is the idea of the dangerous gift. Um, to create new places where people can uh, work together to explore the many possibilities of understanding our difficulties and transforming into a place that we might call healing or recovery. So with that.